Well, we are now joined uh, via Zoom by the Ukrainian ambassador to South Africa, Lyubov Abrentova. Uh, ambassador, good, uh, good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. Let's first start with the story that we just played out with now, and that is uh, Ukraine um, denying, um, or rather Russia denying any humanitarian assistance uh, from the United Nations uh, following the burst of that dam. What do you make of this? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, exactly the disaster, the ecological disaster that uh, uh, caused by um, Russia's explosion of the dam uh, is something that needs to be addressed by uh, the United Nations experts. And uh, as of today, we know that Russia is preventing them of going uh, into uh, those areas that are still under occupation of uh, Russia. Uh, the uh, urgent... Um, uh, the urgent um, access to that areas are crucial to prevent further losses among the civilian population, but also to finally recognize that this is something that Russia has to be accountable for. Okay, and then let's deal with the Africa peace mission. From Ukraine's observation, looking at the meeting that took place with uh, President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky and then the following one with uh, Vladimir Putin and how that also played out, what's your assessment, um, Ambassador? And do you also agree with the President Cyril Ramaphosa that this mission has been impactful? Uh, this mission was important. Uh, that goes without saying. It was the first um, mission of that scale from Africa that uh, visited uh, Ukraine. Uh, we all were uh, witnessing uh, the message sent by uh, Vladimir Putin to the leaders when they arrived to Ukraine and when they actually were uh, visiting uh, the city of Bucha when the missile attack uh, started. Um, what we can consider as achievement is that the direct dialogue was established between uh, the heads of delegations and uh, President Zelensky. Uh, the achievement is that um, finally um, everyone recognizes that this is not the conflict, this is the war of aggression of Russia in Ukraine. Uh, all the delegations were unanimous in saying that they respect United Nations Charter, thus they respect sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, of Ukraine. Uh, all of them were invited to join the Global Peace Summit, and we hope that this is something that will be happening in the future. Um, we did confirm that our choice is to protect our land, protect uh, our people, and it was made very clear that we do recognize the different crises and consequences that are coming uh, because of Russian aggression in Ukraine, but the uh, food insecurity in Africa and uh, the lack of fertilizers is not the only concern that has to be a concern for African leaders. The complications and consequences are much broader. We're talking about yeah. um, damage of infrastructure, about our children uh, that uh, were taken by Russia uh, in, into Russia, uh, etc. Does Ukraine believe that these African head of states are neutral? And also, um, because of the neutrality, or in the case of South Africa, said that they are none aligned would be the perfect mediators for this conflict? Let's agree that the position of uh, each particular uh, representative of this delegation uh, is uh, the starting points are very different. And I do believe that uh, to agree on common language within themselves, it was already a big challenge. Um, that is why, and, and we know the votes of each particular country uh, represented in that mission during the uh, their positions taken in the United Nations uh, General Assembly. Uh, the willingness of Russian Federation to talk to them uh, also shows that uh, Russia is ready to engage with this particular 
leaders that gives us the opportunity to send our strong messages, not only as we are doing on the battlefield, but also uh, through uh, diplomatic engagement that uh, we know today that the President Ramaphosa confirmed that the message from Zelensky was delivered to uh, Putin. Okay. Um, during that meeting that um, President uh, President Valdemir had, so, sorry, President Putin had with the African leaders, he held up what he called a draft treaty, which was initiated by negotiation group from Kiev. Why has this draft treaty not been implemented? We had a number of negotiations uh, since the beginning of invasion. You remember there was a set of negotiations in Belarus. Then we had uh, one in uh, Turkey. And uh, during all those negotiations, what is important to remember that Russia was still occupying and coming deeper in the territories of Ukraine, killing our civilians. Thus, the um, further negotiations uh, were not necessary anymore because uh, the main goal of Russia was still there, is to take our territories and to eliminate our people. So you cannot negotiate with a country that is not willing peace and that is not willing negotiations. That's what we were clearly explaining to our partners from yeah. uh, the African countries. And that's what was proven by that missile attack uh, on the 16th of June. Yeah. So President Putin himself also saying that Moscow has been willing to negotiate, but the problem seems to be uh, from Kiev's side. The only way when we can negotiate, and this is the main message that Zelensky sent to him, is that they have to withdraw their troops from our sovereign territory. And today when the counteroffensive of Ukraine is that close and when they are losing on the ground they are trying to say that they are ready for negotiations but the only reason for them to declare that and to aim to this is just to regroup their forces and just to uh, become stronger to be able uh, to continue to control those occupied territories that yeah. they are still controlling today. What then do you make, Ambassador, of as part of the, the peace missions, um, at, at least request, I guess, is that the children who were abducted allegedly, that those children must be returned. And also taking into consideration that that particular case is one of the reasons that uh, Vladimir Putin is facing this warrant of arrest uh, from the ICC. Children must go back home. That's the action that we clearly see as an attempt and genocide uh, against the Ukrainian nation. Um, this is uh, non-negotiable. Children must come back to Ukraine. Yeah. Now, considering that there is this admission then, because it was also said by our president, this is now the South African president, and there's, of course, the BRICS summit that is coming up. Um, where does Ukraine stand with regards to this? Do you think that South Africa should execute that warrant of arrest or would it further muddy the waters considering that it has now been put on the table as one of the issues that needs to be negotiated towards peace? Uh, even for South Africa, being a negotiator among uh, other countries that visited Ukraine and Russia, being equal, uh, in that mission uh, doesn't give uh, it any um, uh, any option to avoid its obligation to arrest Putin would he uh, be coming to uh, South Africa for the BRICS summit. Uh, our take on that is that um, South Africa being the signatory to uh, the Rome Statute has its obligation according to this. Okay. A final one from my side, Ambassador, is um, there's the NATO summit that's taking place next month. One of the issues that would be discussed is how closely um, Ukraine would be moving towards NATO. I guess that is also the phrase that was used uh, by the Secretary General of, of NATO. Is Ukraine still applying to become a member of NATO? Yes, more than ever. Um, 
if uh, we would ask uh, the population of Ukraine to come to the referendum and to vote whether they are seeing Ukraine a member of NATO uh, in 2014, I don't think 50% of Ukrainian population would support this. If we would hold this referendum on the 24th of February last year, already more than 50% of Ukrainian population would vote to become uh, members of NATO. And lastly, if we would need to hold the referendum today, no. more than 80% of Ukrainians uh, support this. We need security guarantees, but not only from NATO. I think that as of today, we need security guarantees from as many countries uh, as can uh, provide us with such a security um, confirmation. But uh, the membership in NATO yeah. is definitely something that we will continue to apply for. Okay. Um, Ambassador, I know that I said my last question is the last one. Something that just popped up now is um, the, the mission from, from Poland and South Africans being blocked uh, from moving forward. Um, the, 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 the statement by the Polish government was that dangerous goods were on board that plane. This is now the South African um, plane. And the other issue was that there were persons on board that aircraft whose presence the Polish side had not been notified of beforehand we, these people were supposed to go to ukraine does ukraine know about all of these people and would ukraine have been informed of all of these arms as well that would be moving into ukraine via this craft uh let's stick to the official statement of polish side um this uh, uh, people and this plane was not on the territory of ukraine so it's a bit complicated for me to comment on that but sticking to the statement, um, we see that there were some undeclared uh, and as it's called um, dangerous goods. Pay attention, 12 containers with dangerous goods. I will leave it there. Uh, secondly, uh, we definitely were aware about certain number of people as a delegation coming to uh, Ukraine intending to come into Ukraine, including journalists, because they had to receive their visas and the embassy of Ukraine and South Africa was responsible to issuing uh, them visas. That's what we did. And um, I guess that um, for those uh, civilians who were on the plane, it still was possible to come to Ukraine and to accompany the uh, delegation. Yeah. So does that mean that Ukraine doesn't know of certain arms as well? Uh, we are aware uh, of a certain arms that were intended to take uh, to be taken on the plane because usually the procedure for our um, viewers uh, is that uh, when you are planning uh, such a trip, the, tri the, the uh, plane has to receive clearance when it goes through different territories of the countries through their airspace. And then uh, if uh, the weapons uh, are carried by the security personnel, it has to be cleared. I'm not a military expert to tell you um, whether this um, amount of weapons would fit in one container or in 12 containers uh, of what we were aware. But this is on already the Polish side who was there and who declared in an official statement that the amounts were uh, something that was not confirmed or agreed uh, beforehand. So we are using that information with you. Okay, thank you so much for your time. That is uh, the Ukrainian ambassador to South Africa, Lyubov Avravdova.